this is Nick once more at NJ's Bricks and today we're doing another top 10 of a different type. This is the top 10 most frustrating Lego sets that I have ever built. Now there's a number of reasons I might consider a set to be frustrating either because it wasn't very fun to build, it might have been really difficult to build, perhaps the end result of the set was just baffling and frustrating for that reason because it was either boring or it didn't meet the aims of what I felt the set should have been. Perhaps the set just sucks. So all that said, like and subscribe down below if you enjoyed this content. There's no honorable mentions to start off this video with. We're gonna jump right into the 10 most frustrating lego sets i've ever built you'll see a few other sets get mentioned in drive-bys on my way there including in this first listing at number 10 the mandalorian helmet set 75328 but honestly this goes for pretty much any helmet commander cody darth vader you name it if it is a lego helmet i probably did not enjoy building it at all now the striking thing here is that i love how these sets look on display i think they're a really great scale being like slightly bigger than a small model like a funko pop or whatever but not the size of a real helmet obviously so that you can conceivably get a lot of these and display it on not a very huge amount of shelf space but putting them together just sucks. They're basically trying to achieve that spherical look. They need a lot of variations in like small one by one bricks and studs and plates and things of that nature to make the shape of the overall helmets actually coalesce. And while I do have to praise them from their design and engineering standpoint in achieving that with the bricks that are available to them, it to me is not fun to put together at all. I hate building these things. I don't think I built a single one that I actually liked other than maybe the, the Luke Red 5 helmet because you don't have that solid core snot bricks that you're building on top of the whole time. I really just don't enjoy building any of the helmets. For that reason, they come in at 10. Going down to number 9, a recent addition to the channel. This is the Walt Disney Tribute Camera 43230. To be honest, I just don't know why this set exists. It delivers some awesome minifigures for us and this incredible film strip piece, so I'm glad it does exist for those reasons, but who wants to display this weird old-timey camera? It doesn't display well. You wouldn't play with it because it doesn't do anything. It's really fiddly. It's top-heavy. The base doesn't actually hold up quite well. It's very easy to knock over. I just don't understand why this set was made. Like, what was the pitch? They really just want to use this as a way to push out the figures. They could have done another CMF if they wanted. I'm not sure why this set exists. I didn't really enjoy building it. I don't think it displays well. I love a couple aspects about it, which is basically the extra stuff we got alongside it. But it was not fun to build. It doesn't look good. It's number nine most frustrating sets I have ever built. Number eight on the list is on this list for a similar reason of me not understanding why it exists, and that is Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Darth Vader set 75334 from the Obi-Wan series. Again, this set has some cool minifigures, and I'm happy for that. I'm glad to like every once in a while take an L on a set so they can give us some good minifigures, but what does this set exist for? It sucks. It's meant to recreate the scene from the show where, like, the fires in between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, and for some reason Darth Vader's like, oh, I really want to kill Obi-Wan, but there's some fire and stuff in the way there, so like, whatever, see you later, man. This particular scene that they've recreated in the set doesn't look compelling in LEGO at all. It's just a great platform, and it's 400 pieces. Where are all the pieces? I don't even know where they got to 400 on this thing. Back in the day, this set would have been like 92 pieces. It would have looked identical. Like, there, there's just no reason for the set to exist. It's overparted. It's overpriced. Just give us the minifigures and poly bags, call it a day. On to set number seven, another set that is in a similar vein to the other ones. It is on this list because I was disappointed with it, not because I didn't like the build, and that is Boba Fett's throne room, 75326. This place is a palace, right? Jabba's palace now becomes Boba's palace. And the set they give us here is this tiny little dinky room. It does not carry at all the grandiosity you'd expect from something titled a palace. You've seen it on screen, you know it's supposed to be way bigger, more cavernous. This set just doesn't work for me at all. It doesn't look compelling. Again, it has some cool minifigures, so I guess it's another case of like taking an L on a set so you can get some good figures, but then you're paying $100 to get six minifigures because the set looks terrible. What are you doing with that? You get some pieces, I guess, you could use to build something else, 
that actually looks cool. So uh, I wish they'd found a different way to give us these pieces or just give us a cooler set, but I'm not impressed with this one. I wanted the figures really bad, but I waited to get them until I could find the set on sale because I just couldn't pay that price for that set. Now, conversely, number six on this list, another Lego Star Wars entry is one that I'm very pleased with the end result. I love how it looks, but the build process was not fun to me, and that is the Death Star Trench Run set. 75329. I mean, this thing has a great level of detail, not fun to build. All the tiny little bits and bobs and pieces and the different dimensionality they included there makes for a really cool showpiece and adds so much detail to the close ups of the Death Star that you got with those original model makers adding all the Griebling from smashing and model kits and parts together, but that didn't make it fun to build. Having to really pay very close attention to all these little steps to make sure you don't get a piece out of line and stuff. Not that it would matter a ton because the set doesn't have like movement and functionality that's critical to the build. So if you get a detail out of place, you probably wouldn't notice it. But it wasn't very fun to me to build for that reason. Too many small and fiddly pieces. Not really my style, although I do like the display. And we are moving our way into the top five. It is the Technic Jeep Wrangler 42122, but pretty much any Technic car. All of them. I hate building these things. Sliding all the tiny, like, washers and spacers and bits and bobs down the axle rods and fitting them into place. And it, it's not the build experience I want out of Lego. Call me old school. Call me basic. Call me childish. I like clicking the bricks together. I like when sets use some Technic elements. You know, usually it's to create some kind of a mechanism for a play feature. And those I appreciate. But when the set is built primarily of Technic parts, I don't have fun building it at all. And that's a disappointment because I actually love the Jeep Wrangler when it's completed. The way like the pistons move in the engine and all the different parts that come together to make it work and the way that it looks, I think are awesome. But I hate building these sets so much that I don't own any of them. I won't display any of them. I might build some of them for the channel here and there and they do decent numbers, but I just can't stand putting all of these little Technic parts together and for that reason, Number five is the Jeep Wrangler, but pretty much any Technic car you'd see me build on this channel. Number four, Optimus Prime 10302. This set, honestly, it looks cool. It looks really cool when it's built. You can transform it. It looks pretty good as a truck. I give a lot of kudos to the designers for finding a way to make it display compelling in both configurations and actually be able to transform between the two and instead of being some kind of like two in one situation where you can build the truck or you can build optimus so seriously kudos to them however it's super fiddly to transform in it's not easy to do at all you have to be very careful with it it's easy to knock pieces off it's easy to mess it up in some way if you're playing with a transformer i mean granted this is adult oriented toy it's 200 dollars you know, it's not necessarily for younger kids. You're probably gonna display it. You're not really playing with it like you would a Transformer toy. But you wanna be able to transform the thing. You're driving the truck and it jumps out and you make Optimus Prime. Then he's fighting. Like, you don't have time to wait for Optimus to transform because he's too fiddly and then he loses the hubcap and whatnot. So for that reason, number four on my most frustrating Lego sets was Optimus Prime. Number three on the list here, one of the most frustrating sets to build ever for me is the Typewriter 21327. This is one of the most amazing mechanical sets that I have ever seen. The way the mechanism actually operates to have the keys trigger the hammer is extremely compelling to me. I love the way that it works, but building it was terrible. So inside of this thing, there's all these really long Technic axles that have a ton of different Technic spacers and pieces that slide along the plus-shaped Technic axle. It is really, really easy to look at the instructions and get confused or miss which specific order this 8, 10, 12 pieces you're sliding onto this are supposed to go in. And there was a number six, seven, eight times I had to slide all those little pieces off of one of these rods, slide them back on to get them into the correct order. Now, when you finally do and you get it going, you're going to be very happy with the end result. But if you're like me and you don't enjoy Technic, you're going to hate building this set. I've never done the Grand Piano. I'd like to eventually. I think that's similarly very cool. And the way that it works is awesome. But I have a feeling I wouldn't enjoy the mechanism. Number two on the most frustrating Lego sets I have ever built is the Magic Maze Gift with Promo. This is 40596. This was a GWP you could get a while back if you spent X amount of dollars. They included this set with your purchase. This set is cool looking. I love the pops of color and I love the little features they put in the maze. The problem with it doesn't work. 
it just straight up really like I understand that it's supposed to be challenging but it is impossibly easy to just roll the ball off this thing. They needed to build up some of the barriers in this thing that like, you know, it's a pretty straightforward set to me. I feel like they could have put, you know, two, three more solid days of design into this thing to get it so that it functioned a little bit better than it does. And it would have been one of my favorite GWPs they've ever done. But as it stands, it really doesn't function at all. And for that reason, it is number two. You've been waiting for this moment the entire video. The most frustrating Lego set that I have ever built is also the most satisfying Lego set I've ever built. And that is 10303, the Loop Coaster. If you watched my last video about the top 10 most satisfying sets I've ever built, you would have seen Loop Coaster, spoiler alert, at number one. When you get this thing going with a motor attached to it and you just watch it run and run and run, it is unbelievably satisfying and super cool. One of the most amazing display pieces LEGO has ever made. When you actually build this thing, man, it is not fun. You're spending a bunch of time making sure everything is crazy solid connected. You're spending a bunch of time fiddling with the giant tower and the counterweight that is intended to pull the cars up to meet the top of the track. And then you're spending a bunch of time getting that whole mechanism to operate perfectly so that the cars can actually go onto the track and start the run instead of just falling off and all of your patrons falling to their deaths, which happens over and over and over again if you don't have everything aligned just perfectly. Once you get everything aligned and you get this thing running on its own perpetually, it's one of the most incredible things LEGO's ever put out in their entire existence. But the process you have to take to get there is really long, pretty annoying in some parts, and for that reason, the Loop Coaster is the most frustrating LEGO set I've ever built. What's the most frustrating LEGO set that you have ever built? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.